This is Floss Weekly. I'm Doc Searles. This week in the very cool Twitch studios. I'm just so privileged and happy to be here. It's really neat. Love these guys too. Now here's the thing. This week's episode is about Massive Wiki and it has Pete Kaminsky who is behind this thing on the sh- on the show along with Sean Powers, my co-host. Got good questions, got great answers and that is coming up next. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. This is Floss Weekly, episode 695, recorded Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. Massive Wiki. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Compiler, an original podcast from Red Hat discussing tech topics, big, small, and strange. Listen to Compiler on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And by IRL, an original podcast from Mozilla. IRL is a show for people who build AI and people who develop tech policies. Hosted by Bridget Todd, this season of IRL looks at AI in real life. Search for IRL in your podcast player. And by Bitwarden. Get the password manager that offers a robust and cost-effective solution that can drastically increase your chances of staying safe online. Get started with a free trial of a Teams or Enterprise plan, or get started for free across all devices as an individual user at bitwarden.com slash twit. Hello again, and good whenever it is, wherever you are. I am Doc Searles. This is Floss Weekly, and... For those of you not visually impaired watching this on video, you will see that I am in the Twitch studio. And this is a first for me. It's a new for me. Um, but none of the habits that I have uh, apply. Uh, so I may struggle a little bit with this and that, but so far I haven't. I'm joined today by Sean Powers himself. Um, there he Hello. is in somewhere um, in Michigan. <laughs> I assume. I, I'm like in the phantom domain today. It's a... Uh... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm in Michigan. It's hot today. It'll it's, be probably snowy tomorrow. Yeah. That's kind of how it is. This is this is in Petaluma, California, where there was still the marine layer fog overhead. I may look odd yeah. to some people used to seeing me, too, because I forgot my glasses. So, But I can I can live without them. So our, our guest today is, is uh, Peter Kaminsky, um, who I've known a very long time, uh, and you've never met before. <laughs> so <laughs> It's true. Uh, and you said earlier... That's a weird brag, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, uh, rather than talk about your prep, which you disclaimed earlier, um, what's your curiosity going into this thing? Uh, so I, I'm actually just curious, uh, you know, in, in a lot of his uh, information that we read, uh, he, he really thrives putting people together who can make awesome things happen. And I actually really like that. That's kind of... Uh, one of my, uh, similar to why I do what I do. So, I, yeah, I'm just curious what he does and why he does it and how he does it and all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> so, so bring him in out of the green room, which is not even a green screen, but a switch <laughs> a switch in our control center. Um, there he is. Hey, Pete. Um, I, I have to say about Pete that um, uh, I think I, I met you maybe even before you did social text, but... Um, which was an, an, an early commercial wiki thing. Um, but I know Pete best as a guy who has the best answers to questions on the list he's on. And um, there's one in particular that I'm on with. And he, I, I, see, I see Pete as kind of a mentat who has just awesome answers to things and knows just a ridiculous amount of stuff and is technically adept as well. So uh, with all that as, as, as a bit of prep, Pete, just give, give us your brief CV uh, uh, just so we can start lining up the questions. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so uh, I call myself a uh, entrepreneur and consultant. Um, I like to help people uh, with tech. So I'm pretty good at tech. And um, I, I like, as Sean said, I like uh, connecting people and connecting people together and people to information so they can get, get done what they want to get done. Yeah. So I'm, I'm now looking at my cheat sheet, which you sent us earlier. You've actually been at this stuff since 1977 with a CDC 6400 <laughs> yeah. teletype P-dial. Um, you ran an ISP like in the early 90s, um, 
uh, and social techs came along in in, in two thousand. So, I, I, let me ask you about about wikis and what happened with social techs because I, I was kind of a customer then. Um, there was an effort to sort of commercialize wikis. I think I think wikis are one of the best things ever invented. Um, and at this and and I'm adept at Wikimedia. I edit in Wikipedia. It's probably the only thing I do that's a little bit technical. Um, in a practical sense, why aren't they bigger than, I mean, obviously Wikipedia is gigantic. Everybody relies on that. You know, you skip, you do a search on Google, you skip down past all the ads, and then there's the Wikipedia one with a little box over to the right as a shortcut. Um, but it's still, the world has not adopted these, even though everybody types on a QWERTY keyboard. It's not like learning something that technical is that hard. So what's the deal with that? It's a great question, and uh, I wish I had the answer because uh, because it would make my life easier. <laughs> um, I keep trying to give the world wikis. Um, uh, many of us try to keep giving the world wikis, um, and you know they kind of bounce off. Um, Social text. I, I've. It was a company, a startup that I started with a few friends uh, in Silicon Valley, um, and we had a really good run. Um, the thing that I really wanted from it was to prove out the um, prove that there was an ROI for collaboration. Um, I I like the idea of people working together and in business. Back when we started, uh, very early 2000s, uh, it was a little bit. Uh, it was actually very uncommon for people to work together. We were still learning how to be networked, um, uh, and. I think kind of the answer to your question kind of is um, the the, um, the the way that we get brought up, uh, especially in the U.S. Uh, we're very ind individualized, uh, and our schooling system separates people and tries to make them work by themselves on their own, uh, which I I think is really silly and stupid. Um, but you go into business thinking that uh, everything, you know, you, you have to protect your information yourself from every other person working with you. Um, and you and people end up with a little fiefdoms and, and things like that. So uh, we're taught not to collaborate. We're taught not to work together. Um, uh, another part of it is, uh, especially for your, um, your listeners and your viewers, I think society has a tough time, especially our, our culture, our, uh, our, our business model um, in, in capitalism is that the commons is kind of a bad thing. So wikis are best when they're a commons, uh, a, a community of people working, working together. And um, when I see work, wikis really working, you can't tell who wrote what. Um, you can't, you know, you, you don't point to, you know, these are this is my half of this sentence, and I also wrote this paragraph down here. The other parts of the page belong to other people. You just don't say that. A wiki is a collaborative thing and collaboratively owned. It's a commons. So it's just, I, I have a a hard time understanding why wikis are are hard to pick up. But I think a lot of it is is our culture. So a, a couple of questions there, a couple of thoughts also. Um, one is like I've I've written a fair amount of stuff on um, on Wikipedia, or but mostly I've just corrected things and just filled things in. I've never sensed I'm part of a community. On the contrary, I've sensed from rebukes that I've gotten from Wikipedians and also. Having some unknown person try to cancel me uh, because it wasn't notable enough. Um, my experience with Wikipedia is actually, though I love it and I value it enormously, and it's also like the biggest example we have of a wiki, um, not exactly friendly. And, um, yeah. and so I'm wondering if you can make, help me or the audience make sense of that. Yeah, I, Wikipedia is a really amazing and wonderful thing, um, and I know some of the folks uh, that got started that got it started. Um, uh, it's it's a good observation that it doesn't feel like a community, especially for uh, you know there's 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 a kind of concentric circles of of Wikipedia, um, and I'm sure that I, I know actually I know people in 
in different circles. Um, it's actually kind of a multi multi concentric circles thing. Um, but I know people who participate in the community of being Wikipedians, um, and for them, it feels like a community. Um, for you know a billion people using it, uh, it's just hard to fit a billion people into a community. So I think that's a a big part of it. Uh, the the scale at which it operates is too big for a, a good cohesive community. Um, the the unfriendliness of it uh, is I I it's funny I I've had I've helped people with you know um, hey I just got canceled on Wikipedia what's up with that or I've had things that uh, I've added to Wikipedia and they haven't been notable enough to 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 stay. The um, the thing that that Wikipedia has built is uh, very, um, because of the scale, because of the kind of artifact it is, it's supposed to be a um, uh, authoritative kind of uh, way to look up information. Uh, it it has grown into something that is allergic to a lot of of information that you know that should should and ought ought to and should live someplace. Um, but it kind of just can't live in Wikipedia. So uh, one of the the, the big the big uh, one of the big rules of Wikipedia is that you have to have a source for whatever you put on Wikipedia. It needs to be it it's likes to be in print actually. Um, uh, you know you, you're not supposed to do original research. You're not supposed to to put things that are things that maybe a few people know that are important, um, but aren't published someplace else and haven't been vetted through you know editorial processes elsewhere uh, it just doesn't belong in Wikipedia so um, the the bureaucracy that runs Wikipedia and I don't mean that as a slight um, uh, I mean that as as a compliment really the um, it's a it's a complicated thing to build uh, it's got uh, many, many, many languages, many, many, many cultures, um, all trying to squeeze into, you know, hundred, hundreds of thousands of pages. Um, it's a tough job. Um, it is what it is. It's, it's kind of a wiki and it's kind of not. Um, you can definitely call it a wiki in this, and it's a good one in some senses. It's got um, easy linking and uh, easy editing. Uh, it's not a, another... The, the, the wikis I like are communities of, you know, um, a dozen people or a hundred people or a couple hundred people. Uh, it's definitely not that. And it's, it's just, it is what it is. So I know, I know Sean is ready with a question, but first I have to I let... <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I'm teeing up Sean and then tell him to stay away. But first I have to let you know, let's take this... <laughs> To stop laughing before I do the ad. Okay. Um, first, I have to let you know that this episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Compiler, an original podcast from Red Hat discussing tech topics, big, small, and strange. Compiler comes to you from the makers of Command Line Heroes, another of our sponsors, and is hosted by Angela Andrews and Brent Simino. Technology can be big and bold and bizarre and complicated. Compiler unravels industry topics, trends, and the things you've always wanted to know about tech through interviews with the people who know it best. On their show, you'll hear a chorus of perspectives from the diverse communities behind the code. Compiler brings together a curious team of red hatters to tackle big questions in tech like, what is technical debt? What are tech hiring managers actually looking for? And do you have to know how to code to get started with open source? Episode 2 covers what can video games teach us about edge computing. The internet is a patchwork of international agreements and varying infrastructure, but there is something coming to change the way we connect. In this episode of Compiler, hosts compile what edge computing could mean for people who enjoy video games and what this form of entertainment could teach us about the technology. Episode 9, How Are Tech Hubs Changing? Traditionally, if someone wanted a career in tech, they had to make the move to a tech hub a city packed with startups and talent, but things are starting to change. The hosts of Compilers speak to a few of the change makers who are thinking outside the physical and social dimensions we've come to associate with innovation. And a relevant thing there is that I'm working, I'm working for Twit here, and this is my first time in the studio. So 
I've been doing this remotely from the start. So learn more about Compiler at red.ht slash twit. New episodes are out now. Go and download them at any time and be sure to check back for new shows. Listen to Compiler on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. We'll also include a link on this episode's show page. My thanks to Compiler for their support. So, Sean, you're on. <laughs> yeah. You can come so out I, of your box now. <laughs> yeah. No, you just, uh, Pete touched on a lot of uh, on a lot of things. Now, I, of course, was educated in the American education system. Um, uh, and yet I, I'm also uh, fairly involved in the open source world, which I think makes me a, a little bit more uh, open da, 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 uh, to uh, working, you know, as a group. But I have to admit, perhaps it is the, the success of Wikipedia that makes me hesitant to uh, use wikis because, you know, I see the, uh, you know, one day I'll wake up and half the pages on Wikipedia will have Nazi symbolism on them because they were hacked. Or, you know, I see like massive fights about canceling Doc on his Wikipedia page. And I'm like, I almost hope I'm not like popular enough that people want to fight over my Wikipedia page. Maybe I'll just squeak in there and, you know, uh, nobody will notice. Uh, so, I, I guess my my question is how how would somebody like myself who has a very small community right now of uh, people who are learning Linux like my my YouTube channel and, and that sort of a thing? Um, I, I recently started a Discord server for people to talk and communicate and, and work with each other. The problem with that is it's not uh, it's not something that uh, a search engine is going to index, right? It's not going to be something that people can go back and and get valuable information from previous discussions. Uh, so a wiki would be a great place to have uh, information and and stuff like that. But back to the schooling part, that is opening it up to one more thing that I have to babysit because yes, it might be maintained very well, but also it could get abused and, you know, who watches the watchers and all of those issues um, that at the end of the day, sometimes like, you know what, I'll just write something myself. I'll just do it myself all alone and post it so I don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> and so how, I mean, if you have thoughts on how can we get past that? Uh, because Wikipedia almost uh, reinforces the notion that it's only going to be more work and more frustration if you open it up for everybody to uh, to contribute. So I don't know. I, I don't want to be a jaded internet user. <laughs> um, help me, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, John. Um, uh, let's peel back the, the onion a little bit more on on um, why people don't use wikis. And I think from from the very beginning in social text, our observation was to learn the the basics of of a wiki. You know, click the edit button, type some stuff, click save. Uh, it's you know, and and then you know, you get told that by the way, somebody else might edit what you edited, or you could go edit some what somebody else edited. All of that description is about two minutes, you know, three minutes, something like that. It's very quick. Um, uh, there's Part of the friction is, um, I mean, I'm going to abstract out Wikipedia for a sec, maybe we'll come back to that. But part of the friction is, um, is well, you know, it's just easier if I have my page and she has her page and, you know, and then I won't screw up her thing um, and she won't mm. screw up mine. I like, I like that. Uh, so it takes a little bit of acculturation to get over that that hump, um, you know, being in the commons. Um, this, this is something that open source people um, are are really really familiar with. You know, you're used to the concept that um, hey, I'm going to put something up on on uh, GitLab or GitHub or whatever, and other people are going to be able to change it. Um, when you're in uh, when you're participating in open source, you also learn that uh, people participate by permission. Uh, it's not something that they come and scribble all over your, your source code. Um, they need access or they need to uh, do a fork and pull, a pull request back or something like that. Um, so there's a couple levels of learning what Wiki is. One of them is just, you know, click at it, um, type some stuff, maybe type in Markdown nowadays. Um, uh, Markdown has kind of taken over, I think, from the Wiki syntaxes we used to use uh, 15 years ago. Um, click Save. That's one level. Another level is 
uh, imagine you're on a soccer field or something like that and you're playing um, pickup soccer with a bunch of your friends and you're kicking foot football for the rest of the world. That's not, not strange. Um, you're playing football uh, with a bunch of your friends on a field. Um, you need to learn how to pass the ball to one another. You need to learn how to posi position yourself on the field so that your, your um, colleagues can pass to you, things like that. <laughs> There's um, an acculturation thing that happens um, when you're trying to write 10 or 100 or 1,000 um, pages of content together um, that, that just takes time. And uh, I've seen it. it. It's something that it's, it's easy and fun to do, uh, but it's not something that we have good models for. Uh, it's not something that is, you know, that... Oh, this is just like, um, you know, uh, oh, I'm going to show you Google Docs. It works just like Microsoft Word or vice versa or something like that. There isn't a model for we're all working together on this. And um, uh, an example of something that I'm talking about, kind of the equivalent of passing the ball in, in soccer is, uh, OK, uh, I, I see this great page, but I've got some comments I want to, to put on it. If I put the comments in line, then that's interrupting the flow of the page. If I put a link to a comment on another page, then it's harder to see it and it's not integrated. What are we going to do? Um, uh, both of those and a, and a couple other ways to make comments um, uh, that I could rattle through are, are fine and wonderful ways to do it. The trick is to make that kind of decision collaboratively uh, as a group. Um, and learn that it's okay to make decisions together as a group, that it's okay to, you, you need to do some kind of careful, um, it's, it's a lot like people jostling in a, in a meeting room or something like that or a cocktail party. You know, how do I get from here to there without bumping into people and spilling their drinks? Um, how do I make sure that people, uh, you know, I feel like I have enough personal space around me, um, but I can still talk to people. Those kinds of social de decisions and, and they end up being kind of collaborative decisions with the whole group. Um, maybe you've got a host saying, um, hey, folks, I, I know that we've got some new people here or we've got some people who've, who like a little bit more space than usual. Let's all spread out and give everybody a chance to, to breathe. Um, different host or a different, different set of people, you might get the same kind of... Uh, you might get the same uh, uh, announcement from the host, but it's like, hey, let's pack some more people in here. We're having more fun when we're all together and dancing. Back in the day when we could used to congregate without masks and whatever. <laughs> um, the same kind of thing has to happen in a wiki, and, and there just aren't great models for that. Um, people don't get taught how to do that, that it, that it needs to be done. Um, people are used to making a decision for themselves, how, you know, I'm writing a long paper, here's how I'm going to put the headings, here's how I'm going to put the footnotes, um, or even worse, um, they're used to being told by their professor or their, their teacher, you know, this is the way that you're going to do it, um, I'm telling you, and you don't even get a choice. So um, a, a big part, back to your question, Sean, um, um, a big part of it is getting the wiki started, and then that's kind of the easy part. The next part is helping, you know, either collectively or maybe with a host um, like yourself, like me, um, kind of set the ground rules for participating uh, in the wiki um, and and figuring out how to, you know, how to slowly kind of work together and build together and not annoy each other, not upset each other, and find the places where it feels positive when it's like, wow, I come back, came back to this page and I had left it kind of me a mess. It's all pretty now. Mm -hmm. uh, or, wow, this, you know, somebody added a couple paragraphs here that, that like expand what I was talking about in a really cool way. Uh, that kind of stuff is is um, what you get into when a wiki community is successful, and uh, and it's something that I really don't. It's um, because wikis can be semi-synchronous, but mostly asynchronous. Um, you can have these kind of conversations, a, a group brain thinking thoughts, and and conversations over weeks and months and even years uh, in the same information space, and that's something you just can't get anywhere. It's um, Go ahead. I just I have I, a, I've got a 
Yeah, let me let me finish one thing. Yep. Um, yep. I, I apologize for continuing to go on and on. The, uh, the the first wiki was made by Ward Cunningham um, uh, back in the early 2000s or late 1990s, maybe. Um, uh, Ward was inspired by hypertext and, and the web and things like that. Uh, and uh, he created the Portland Pattern Repository, um, a wiki about patterns uh, and um, uh, software patterns and um, a way to collaborate together that that we hadn't seen before um, because we had the web and now you could kind of do something that was kind of like HyperCard but all together. Uh, one of the things that I think most of us who were even even participating in uh, the early C2 wiki um, uh, and especially people just looking at it, it looked effortless and it looked easy and it looked like um, uh, like like it, the community just, just kind of came together, just like meshed, like all these people were talking and thinking together and, um, and it was wonderful. Um, it was a bit of a talking, talking with Ward later. Um, it was a bit more complicated than that. Uh, Ward spent a lot of time being a, a careful, thoughtful, um, host, uh, and facilitator of the conversation and how we put links together and how the pages were were developed and what what made sense to put where. Uh, so he did that with a kind of a gentle touch, um, uh, mentoring one on one, I think often uh, and gently moving people forward. Um, the way I ended up thinking of it uh, was that the early uh, words early wiki it. It was kind of like a bonsai to me. Uh, it was something that looked very naturalistic. It looked like it was just, you know, constructed and and it just fell fell together like this. Wow, that's a beautiful tree. You know, if you saw a bonsai from far and f a little bit away and couldn't tell it was a little toy thing, you'd go, Wow, that looks just like a windswept, um, you know, Monterey pine or something like that. Um, but but it was carefully shaped that way. It was carefully shaped to be naturalistic looking. Um, there was a lot of little invisible copper wires holding the thing together. And that was a lot of what, what Ward had done. He, he constructed a, an information space, a knowledge space, and a group brain that was nicely contained um, uh, and felt natural uh, and had a lot of shaping to get to it. So uh, an interesting so, lesson for us. Yeah, and I guess the more I'm thinking about it, as you as you talk about it, uh, so a, a couple a couple notes. One is going to sound very narcissistic, and the other is just a, a maybe a, a bigger related issue. So, um, if I you know I've, I've been a writer for a long time, and when I write, uh, my voice is very clear. I break grammar rules in a very specific Sean sounding way. If you read something I write, it's pretty clear that I wrote it uh, for better or for worse. And I think that with the idea of um, collaborative editing of information. Uh, one, it, it feels, um, it's not quite like a, oh, that's my intellectual property. I mean, because again, I, I love open source and I love the idea of sharing knowledge, but it almost feels like um, you have to make sure you're surrendering any ownership to whatever it is you're, you're documenting or, or putting on a wiki because um, you know, it, it's no longer going to be something that Sean wrote, even if parts of it sound that way. Uh, so I think that's a it's it's weird probably for other people to edit something. Uh, you know, are they going to try to make it match my style? Or are they going to not? And then the other thing, you know, as I was thinking through that, as you were talking to him, like, I, that's kind of why it, when you do collaborative work in school, the high school, college, you know, or even at work, wherever you do collaborative work, generally the group works together and then there's a person who creates the final like, presentation or, you know, paper or whatever. Yep. And I think it's probably for that exact reason, right? For continuity's sake, so that it, it sounds smooth, so that it's not disjointed. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that's why wikis aren't more popular, but I, I could see that being an issue you know, because the the more that people are comfortable writing, the more you know they've found their voice, so to speak. You know, and and it's almost the opposite of that with a wiki. It, it's almost by design going to be disjointed in some way. So I, that's not really a question, just a general observation of that's a challenge. I think that uh, you need to make I, sure you're facing you're totally before right. you even start. Yeah, yeah. That, that's spot on. Um, 
the the way I, the way I think of it maybe um uh it's kind of like you're going out i you know uh the, the the thought that comes to mind the metaphor that comes to mind is is going running uh you know I can go running myself and I'm going to be able to decide where I go and you know in the moment it's like ah I'm going to take this left turn that I I you know always wanted to head that way and I never have um feels good you know the, the wind rushing past my my head um uh kind of a solitude you know I'm in the zone and I'm I'm like you know uh, uh all zen uh with my running so that's a, a wonderful feeling a wonderful experience um a a, a different experience is going running with a few people, a few friends, right? Um, uh, all of a sudden, I've kind of got to watch, you know, to make sure nobody got left behind. Watch, we have to watch to make sure we don't bump into each other. Uh, you know, we we kind of maybe talked about a plan uh, uh, going out, and then it's harder to make that in the moment decision uh, to uh, to take a left turn. Um, but it's it feels different. It feels like we're a we're a team. Uh, that team feeling feels different, right? So running with your running by yourself, it you you know you have your own writing style, uh, and and it feels comfortable and and well worn, and and it's easy to easy to change the way you exactly the way you want to. Um, running together with a bunch of people. Uh, feels different because you know everybody everybody is participating in this. Where should we go? What should we do if uh, you know there's construction? We have to to reroute. Um, that making decisions together feels to me, in in a way, I I, I kind of think humans are are most human when we're we're humaning together, right? Um, uh, and humans are kind of particular and weird that uh, we have this, we have both drives. You know, I want, I just want everybody to go away and I just want to be my, by myself and think my thoughts and have it be quiet. But um, too much of that is not fun, you know, and, and uh, there's times when it's like, wow, it's a lot of fun to be with my friends. We're talking about stuff that I wouldn't have thought of talking about. We're thinking thoughts that I wouldn't have thought. Um, he and, and they are picking up um, on my ideas and building on it in a way that you know I would have never gotten to. Um, I love doing that in a group, right? That's that's what a wiki is. Um, so uh, let me let me segue a little bit into um, massive wiki, um, the the title of the podcast episode here. Um, Doc and I have been wiki. chatting. That was actually the plan. So you are not doing an <laughs> an out of script segue. But, but well tease done. it a bit because I do have to do I have to do have to a brief break. Actually, get, okay. let me just take this point right now because now that you've done the tease, and I'll do the break, <laughs> and then we'll get to Massive Wiki because we've been sending notes to each other. We have to get into Massive Wiki, and now you caught us at it. So <laughs> I have to let you know this episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by IRL, an original podcast from Mozilla. IRL is a show for people who build AI and people who develop tech policies. Hosted by Bridget Todd. This season of IRL looks at AI in real life. Who can AI help? Who can it harm? The show features fascinating conversations with people who are working to build more trustworthy AI. There's an episode about how our world is mapped with AI. The data that's missing from those maps tells you as much of a story as the maps themselves. You'll hear about the people who are working to fill in those gaps and take control of the data. There's another episode about gig workers who depend on apps for their livelihood. It looks at how they're pushing back against the algorithms that control how much they get paid and seeking new ways to gain power over data to gain better working conditions. For political junkies, there are episodes about the role that AI plays when it comes to the spread of misinformation and hate speech around elections, a huge concern for democracies around the world. All of these, by the way, are really close to home for me, especially the missing data here and there. Um, there's so much that we don't know about AI and there's so much we need for ourselves with AI. That's like the, to me, the big frontier. So search for IRL in your podcast player. We'll also include a link to the show notes. My thanks to IRL for their support. So, <laughs> so massive wiki. So that we're, <laughs> we, we only have so much time to talk about it, but tell us what you're doing with massive wiki there, Pete. I will. Um, thanks, Doc, uh, and thanks to our, our uh, sponsors, uh, IRL and Compiler. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, 
I, I feel like uh, Massive Wiki is is kind of a, a way to unlock wikis for for many more people. So I'm I'm really excited about it. Uh, I want to apologize a little bit for the name. Um, uh, it, it actually is a great name, Massive Wiki. Uh, Massive lends itself to a lot of uh, good branding uh, stuff. Um, the the name comes from um, a, kind of an acronym, uh, Markdown, uh, for the MA, and then uh, Shared for S, uh, Versioned for V, and Files for F. Um, uh, so I used to spell it that way originally, um, and people people were very polite, and they didn't tell me that it was hard to remember and hard to spell. <laughs> <laughs> but finally, I realized, oh, they're kind of every I, that face every time I say uh, massive uh, M A S V F. Um, I get it. Let's, let's rename it massive. Um, the idea is uh, M- massive wiki is I, I think of it as a movement. It's very small right now. Um, I've been doing it with a few friends uh, for a year and a half or two years, something like that. Um, and uh, we're working slow. Uh, it's it's finally I, I finally feel like it's kind of uh, worth getting out into the world more. We've solved some of the the initial problems we had with it. The idea is let's do a wiki. Um, and just to, to make a wiki, all you need is markdown files. Um, and there's a convention, kind of an ad hoc convention for links uh, in markdown files, two square brackets around a phrase or, or a word makes a link. So uh, once you can edit plain text files, uh, everybody pretty much who uses a computer can use plain text files uh, in Notepad or TextEdit or your editor of choice, Microsoft Word even. Um, once you're editing plain text files, uh, don't mark it up or anything. Um, but let me tell you a little bit of, of markdown stuff. You know, use uh, uh, here's how to make bullets, here's how to make bold, here's here's how to make a link, and that's n- there's not much more to it than that. Um, so let's make a wiki out of markdown files, uh, and then uh, to get the sharing part of it, where we used to use a centralized server at, um, in in the web, uh, nowadays we might call that the cloud. Uh, wikis used to be a centralized service, uh, like Wikipedia still is. Uh, instead, let's have the files on each uh, person's computer or phone or whatever. Uh, and then we'll use some software to uh, share it with everybody else. Uh, and if we use software like Git uh, to do the sharing, um, to do some versioning and conflict management, uh, somebody else has written all of that for us, and we can take uh, take advantage of the the thing that we've got to have essentially a wiki. Um, this this has worked out really well, and and so software developers, the open source people in the world, will recognize this is the same workflow uh, that you use for code. Um, and in fact, uh, many of your listeners and viewers will have been using es- essentially doing a massive wiki uh, on their own. They will have figured out that uh, Markdown is a good format for keeping track of stuff. Um, uh, it's uh, just complex enough to be interesting, but not too complex. Uh, it's also very standard. Um, Git is uh, also a useful thing for sharing and versioning and stuff like that. Um, a, a tool that we wrote um, to add on to this ecosystem is called Massive Wiki Builder. And uh, Massive Wiki as a set of files uh, works just fine uh, on your computer. Um, uh, but nobody can see it. Uh, the search engines can't index it unless it's in the web. So Massive Wiki Builder fills that gap. Uh, it takes your wiki, and when you make changes to your wiki, it publishes the changes uh, uh, to the cloud. Uh, it's a static site builder. It's not a very fancy one either. Uh, it's not complicated. Uh, it's a few hundred lines of Python code. Um, and it's open source, of course. Uh, but that... I think one of the architectural things about about setting it up, so I, or maybe maybe to back up a little bit, one of the things that's confusing about a wiki is that um, people who don't know how all the backend stuff works, they come to they come to many websites in, in their in their days and weeks. You know, they're going website, 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 website. I don't edit um, Google News. I don't edit, uh, you know, I don't edit Yahoo. I don't edit WashingtonPost.com. I, you know, I just don't edit the web. What do you mean edit the web? Um, uh, and con, you know, conversely, um, 
uh, many people are used to reading and consuming web pages. It's super, super common, super normal. Uh, everybody's used to doing it. Uh, they know how web pages work. They know how navigation works. So how about um, how about if we split up the editing and publishing reading part of that into two things? Uh, we'll do the editing uh, with fancier tools uh, that allow you to um, you know do things with pages uh, that that you don't need to do if you're just reading. And then we'll have a bog standard website. Uh, that that isn't built for editing. It's just built to be a really good website. So Massive Wiki Builder is built to be that. It's something that instantiates a really easy web um, website for you, uh, and uh, it's set up so that you don't um, you don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to be a developer to to get it to run. You don't even need to run Massive Wiki Builder on your own computer. Uh, uh, if you can publish it to one of the Git um, forges, then there are s uh, static site hosts that uh, are willing and able to just pick up your pages and the code and then build the websites for you and host it. You can do that for free, even. So all of this together, kind of, um, it, it has some real nice uh, um, qualities to it. Uh, we're using a very simple format, Markdown, very simple and very standard format. Uh, we're using uh, Git, um, uh, which is uh, standard for software developers, uh, not standard for everybody else. Uh, there's a copy. There's a copy of the whole wiki on every individual's computer who's who's working with it. So, um, if I get annoyed at the group or uh, I go away to the mountains and don't have connectivity, I have the whole wiki um, right here. Um, if we have a cataclysm and, and um, the net goes down for, for days or weeks or months or years, um, I've still got a copy of the whole wiki. So I like the, um, there's a saying, uh, lots of copies keep stuff safe. Um, uh, Massive wiki is built so it naturally kind of uh, multiplies and, and is safe everywhere. Um, uh, another thing that I have found that I didn't expect uh, when I started Massive Wiki was that I have a number, I have dozens of Massive Wikis on my computer, um, and I share them with different people, uh, different uh, access control. Um, uh, a thing that I, I'm surprised to find is that my Massive Wikis kind of like to be promiscuous with each other. Um, I'll develop a page in one place, I find that I need it in another place, and I use regular file tools on my computer to drag and drop it um, between wikis, uh, move it or copy it or whatever. Um, I find, you know, I, I can write stuff um, uh, to post on a blog, and then I find that same format fits into my wiki or vice versa. I'll find a page on the wiki. Uh, it's in Markdown. It's easy to send to different places that, that take Markdown. Oh. Um, yes. Can I ask a, just a clarifying question? So uh, I, I understand the, the concept, and it's it's great to separate the idea of editing from the the hosting of the actual data that can be publicly consumed. Uh, that, you know, lines up with the Git model, right? I mean, you work on things locally, yeah. lots of people do, and then you can... So, but is there then, is there a central place that things are served publicly from, or not even public, publicly, maybe that's not the right word, but uh, served out, you know, that's separated from the editing process. But uh, are these, so the references to other pages, are they still just referencing like on one central place that's serving it out? Are these cross-referencing to wherever you happen to be hosting the uh, consumable version? That, that part's not clear to me. I mean, I understand they get in the, you know, that aspect of it, but I'm not sure where the files are hosted for people to read. Uh, it's a good question. Um, uh, I like your question, Sean. Um, uh, for people who are participating in the wiki, people who are editing the wiki, um, uh, for, th for the software developers, uh, one wiki is one repo. Um, uh, people have uh, either uh, a repo can be public or private in a Git forge, uh, and um, if it's public, uh, you don't get to edit the wiki unless you have you're a member of the wiki. Uh, you can edit it, you can edit a copy of it, you can fork it and make a copy, make changes and offer the changes back with a pull request. 
Um, for people who are editing the wiki, uh, normally they will, they will, uh, so I, I skipped over some of the details. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the details. Um, one of the best wiki viewers, wiki clients, uh, is a personal knowledge management system called Obsidian. Um, uh, the URL for that is obsidian.md. Uh, it's a commercial, more or less commercial product uh, for personal use. Uh, they've, they've got a, a free tier license. Um, it's a really nice product, a really great development uh, crew. Um, it's, it comes with a ton of uh, plugins to make it do uh, cool things. And uh, the plugins are, are mostly open source. Uh, so uh, it's it's been a wonderful it's a wonderful tool and a wonderful ecosystem a bunch of great people um, using it for personal knowledge management most people use uh, Obsidian as a personal knowledge management it's it's coincidentally and yet not so coincidentally um, also a, a massive wiki client uh, the the idea to use Markdown and Markdown links and a set of files in a directory um, is blindingly obvious to anybody who's Done some software development and you know knows knows uh, Markdown, uh, so it's not like Massive Wiki is inventing something new. the The idea of Massive Wiki is to tell people about uh, an, a particular architecture, document a particular architecture, test it with newbies, um, write some uh, auxiliary tools, uh, uh, but just spread the idea of using uh, you know brand it, give it a brand, Massive Wiki. Um, spread the idea of using that. And a thing that is different with Massive Wiki than most people who've come to this Markdown Wiki thing by themselves is to don't just do it by yourself, do it with other people. So um, Obsidian is meant to be a personal knowledge management system, but it's also a Massive Wiki client. And many of our Massive Wiki people use uh, Obsidian as their kind of viewer editor. So to answer one part of your question, Sean, um, a wiki is just a folder and maybe some subfolders uh, with markdown files in it. So uh, if you're looking at it in Finder or Windows File Explorer, it looks just like a bunch of text files or a bunch of markdown files if, if your computer knows about markdown files. Um, and you can do all the same things that you do with it. Um, uh, once you learn a little bit about Git, uh, you know that that folder and the subfolders are a Git repo. Um, Obsidian calls them vaults. Uh, so I can have a personal vault um, slash repo slash folder. Uh, I can have a shared one with a few friends. Um, I can have a very public one where we have lots of collaboration in it. Um, all of those are separate folders with potentially subfolders in it. So then most people who are editing Wiki will use Obsidian. Obsidian is good at both allowing you to edit and navigate through the space and then do a bunch of other things uh, like uh, draw a graph diagram of the connections, uh, um, uh, do different kinds of uh, transformations on the files uh, that, that are useful um, for different reasons. Um, one of the really cool plugins uh, uh, for Obsidian is called Obsidian Git. Um, so thankfully, uh, a few people have written uh, a nice Git client that runs inside of Obsidian uh, with some hotkeys uh, or now some, some, a few buttons on a control panel. You can do all of the Git stuff without really knowing much about uh, the, the mechanics of Git. So I've got a number of people who are non-technical uh, who know that if you uh, control L or command L uh, for pull and control L or command U for push. And that's good enough for, for letting them, uh, the, the push uh, for, for the Git geeks here, push is actually shorthand for um, do a commit, pull, uh, and then a push. Um, that's enough. Those two hotkeys are enough to let them participate in the uh, Git sharing uh, and versioning and things like that. So, so it's, it's more of a collaboration uh, aspect of the of the wiki process than delivery. I guess that that's what I was what I was uh, missing a little bit. Where it's, you were going? The focus is far more collaborating uh, with people working on their own copy and, and syncing up with Git than it is worrying about how the end result is delivered, if you will, because everybody can deliver it however they see fit. Is that a, is that fair? I guess that was the piece that I was uh, yeah. not quite grokking. Yeah. Okay. 
That's totally fair. I the um we have wikis where it it doesn't it isn't published anywhere. To publish it on the web, uh, usually what you do is it doesn't have to be done this way, but usually use the tool Massive Wiki Builder, and it and it builds to uh, one particular place. So people will will say, um, uh, you know, uh, my non-technical users will be doing Massive Wiki stuff by themselves, and I guess by the act of sharing it, uh, making sure that it's shared, pushing it to all of the other contributors, uh, if you've got it set up, it goes to the cloud, uh, it goes to the web too, builds to the web, uh, builds a website there. So what they think of that is, um, hey, I'm making a new blog post in my wiki, or I, I just wrote a, a page of podcasts, including IRL and compiler. Um, I want to get that page so the world can see it, so uh, search engines can see it, I'm going to push. And that's what they think. They they don't you know they don't know much more about that. And then there's typically one web website. It could be multiple websites, but it's typically one website. Massive.wiki, for instance, is a massive wiki, uh, and it looks like a website, and it's also a massive wiki for those people who uh, collaborate with it. I uh, have one probably one last question because we're getting toward the end of the show here. But first, I have to let everybody know that this episode of Philosophy Weekly is brought to you by Bitwarden. Bitwarden is the only open source cross-platform password manager that can be used at home, at work, or on the go, and is trusted by millions. With Bitwarden, you can securely store credentials across personal and business worlds. Every Bitwarden account begins with the creation of a personal vault. With Bitwarden's username generator, you can integrate with three popular email forwarding services that also happen to be open source, simple login, and an addy, and Firefox Relay. That makes adding another layer of security and privacy easier than ever. When using Bitwarden to generate a new username, the option to create an email alias is presented with a sub-selection for choosing your preferred service. Just enter the API key for your individual account with the chosen service, select the desired options, and once generated, a new alias is instantly registered to your account. Using unique usernames, email addresses, and passwords for every account is a powerful method for increasing internet security and privacy and adds protection to logins in the face of data breaches and leaks. This feature is available on the Web Vault desktop app and browser extensions with mobile planned for a future release. Bitwarden is a must need for your business. It's fully customizable and adapts to your business needs. Use Bitwarden Send, a fully encrypted method to transmit sensitive information, whether text or files. Generate unique and secure passwords for every site with enterprise-grade security that's GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, and SOC 2 compliant. Uh, their end-to-end -end encrypted vault helps mitigate phishing attacks. And Bitwarden has recently added even more enterprise capability by adding skim support to make it even easier to provision and manage users. Their team's organization option is $3 a month per user, share private data securely with coworkers across departments or the entire company. Enterprises could use Bitwarden's enterprise organization plan for just $5 per month per user. Individuals can use their basic free account forever for an unlimited number of passwords or upgrade any time to their premium account for less than $1 a month. Their family organization option gives up to six users premium features for only $3.33 a month. At Twit, we're fans of password managers. Bitwarden is the only open source cross platform password manager that could be used at home, on the go, or at work and is trusted by millions of individuals, teams, and organizations worldwide. Get started with a free trial of a Teams or Enterprise plan, or get started for free across all devices as an individual user at bitwarden.com slash twit. That's bitwarden.com slash twit. So, so Peter, I, I, um, I want to uh, ask a couple of things. What is a short question is, are, and, and then I want to get to the commons question. Is there something about that for me? Um, is there a business here? I mean, I, you say you're, you do consulting, but is there a business in Massive Wiki at all? Is there? Uh, I, I don't intend for there to be. Okay. I, you know, certainly there could be. And, um, 
But yeah. it's, it's you mentioned that's not free I'm earlier. This is this, this such and such is free, and I thought well, that might imply there's something cost. So yeah, um, the the thing that's free is hosting. Um, there's a couple services that we use, commercial services for deploying big websites that have a free tier, um, and uh, so. Um, uh, it's it's cool that those uh, commercial uh, static site hosts exist, but that's not part of Massive Wiki and it's not needed. Yeah, so I, I want to get to comments briefly before we close. Um, uh, right now, I mean, I'm uh, embedded in Bloomington, Indiana at the Ostrom Workshop and Elder Ostrom did all this pioneering work on the commons. Um, most people think of the common, and, and we, I, my wife and I are involved in a nonprofit called uh, Customer Commons, which is roughly modeled on Creative Commons, um, which is started by Larry Lessig, who I ran into last night, which is fun. Um, yet, most people, when they hear Commons, they think the word tragic, <laughs> and, and that, that it's a finite resource rather than something that's more open. But I think it's maybe like the word agency, which was hardly used in the personal empowerment sense. Um, until very recently, and um, and is now coming into common usage. So I'm wondering if you if you see any hope for people starting to grok what a commons what a commons is. It's a it's a, it's a tough one to take at the end of the yeah I know. Hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell me everything uh, you know. I've got a minute. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I you know uh, I think so. People participate in commons all the time. Um, uh, we, we have a, like I, I was saying earlier, our capitalist society is not friendly to the idea of commons, but you know, there are commons, uh, you know, the air that you're breathing is a commons, uh, the, the space that you're occupying, you know, where, where you are is kind of a commons. Um, I, when, um, uh, and, and it feels good for people to work on something together. That's, that's something that still exists in, uh, in humans and in, in society. Um, so I have a lot of, I have a lot of, um, uh, I see, I hear more and more people talking about the commons. Uh, let's, let's do this as a commons instead of, you know, I, I want my little slice, um, with, with the way the world is going, uh, we've got a lot of challenges and, uh, more and more I hear people saying the right way to do this is to start a commons rather than to start something proprietary. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I think some of it has to do with the fact that the original commons, like the original everything, was in the physical world and not in the virtual one. And we're still new to the virtual world. I mean, you're in San Diego or someplace, I think. Um, yeah. I'm in the same time zone, but 800 miles away. <laughs> Sean's in yeah. Michigan. And we're all present with each other. And then when the show's over, we're all dispersed. And there's no sense that somebody walked away. And... Um, I just think this is very new to human experience. You know, my, 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 my wife compares it to being without gravity. You know, we're in a place that has no gravity uh, and has no distance. And that's, that's weird. But yet it has like memory. I mean, McLuhan, before he died, said the big thing with computers is 1980 was perfect memory. We'll all have memory. We'll have access to memory. And, and in many ways, I think that's what wikis are about, is it not? That to sort of yeah. bring this full loop, you know. Exactly. You you know things I don't know, and the other guy knows things, and all, and we all forget. By the way, seven seconds later, verbatim is lost. <laughs> right? Yeah. And but we got meaning somehow. We need to write things down in code, which is all language is, and is all writing is, and we're learning many more kinds of code. You know. Um, it's um it's yeah. well well captured. That's a wiki is the, the best wikis. Uh, wikis are commons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I we're I think we're pretty close to the end here. So quickly, there. If you could briefly answer um, anything we haven't asked that you'd like us to have asked, and uh, and I have two uh, brief questions. Something that, that we didn't uh, something that we didn't really cover is um, I talked a lot about how wikis work uh, with the files and sharing and stuff. Um, it's also critically important to have uh, real-time conversations around the wiki. Uh, so you need a chat channel someplace or you know, Zoom calls or something like that. Your team regularly needs to get together and talk about the wiki and how we work together in the wiki and, you know, what, what things that I've noticed that aren't making me happy or, or things that I think would make the wiki 
better together. Um, it's really important to have that that synchronous uh, uh, ability to have synchronous or semi-synchronous conversations that aren't the content of the wiki or the way that we do the wikiing, um, but about it. So that's interesting. Tip. That do we do need to synchronous and the asynchronous? I mean. Uh, you know, libraries are asynchronous, right? Asynchronous mm -hmm. can scale in ways that synchronous can't, right? That's there's a yeah. limit to how far you can go with synchronous. So, two final questions: What are your favorite text editor and scripting language? <laughs> <laughs> we um, ask everybody this. Uh, my favorite text editor is Emacs, um, mm. and I'm a little bit sad that uh, that v VI and its you know uh, descendants have kind of won out. Um, I, I can barely speak VI. I'm, I'm an Emacs person. So <laughs> one of the first things I do on a Linux machine is, you know, app get install uh, Emacs. No, no X because I, I'm not a, uh, a GUI person. I'm a terminal person. Um, scripting language, uh, right now I'm using I, uh, Python is the, is the one that it's, it's easy and fun and, and powerful and productive to use. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was pretty good at Node uh, for a while uh, and JavaScript, uh, and I've kind of lost that, and, and JavaScript has evolved in the past five or 10 years, whatever. Um, so I miss that. Uh, I, I really enjoyed JavaScript, uh, the, the later revs of JavaScript at least, um, but, but Python's my daily driver now. Uh, it's funny, I've mentioned this before, but when I started with Linux Journal in 19... 96, I, I was told by command from on high when there wasn't on high, we're using VI here. <laughs> end, of, end of it. <laughs> so it, it was a religious thing. Anyway, uh, Pete, it's been great having you on the show. Um, Likewise. I, I wish you the best for, for, for Massive Wiki and for everything. And I, and I will be seeing you in various commons anyway. <laughs> so, yes. And I look yeah. forward to that I as well. I look forward to it. Um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Doc. Uh, you're wonderful as always. Thanks for all the things that you do. Oh, you too, man. So, Sean, that yeah. was good. <laughs> it was. So, it, it makes me think all, you know, why aren't schools at every level that set up little group projects to teach collaboration, why aren't we doing our final projects with a, a folder of markdown files in a wiki so that everybody can participate. I just think that would, that's a brilliant way to uh, teach real collaboration. You know, I, I was thinking with, as Pete was talking, now I was given a year of typing instruction in <laughs> junior high school. Um, all, I mean, it's a, I was born in the Pleistocene, so that was, and we had upright typewriters, Royal and Underwoods. And one reason it was possible to hear me typing here is I destroy ordinary electronic keyboards because I'm still type hard. And, um, you know, and my son took, my younger son, one weekend, you know, I, I asked him, so I, I gave you Mavis Beaven Typing Tutor. How did how'd you do with that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did it. You could type, yeah. And he put in the CD. It was in the CD age and tested himself. He had 45 words a minute without any trouble. He did it on a weekend, right? We could take a year <laughs> and teach kids how to you know, how to write and mark down, how to how to how to how to contribute to a wiki, make a wiki, it's, make. I mean, it, yeah. schools should be doing this, and you work with schools, so you can you make them do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> my influence is not quite as, as much as you might think. Um, I, I just like the idea of uh, group participation in the, the final report, so to speak, right? Because like I said, you know, during the show, it's, it, we all, you know, everybody collaborates, we gather around a table, uh, but then somebody is the, you know, the scribe, so to speak, and creates that final project. But if, what if every aspect of the final project were, uh, disparate pieces in the in the markdown uh, files of the folder that is a week well wiki and you could just turn that in and you know the that'd be great uh, the teacher could grade it as a whole I just think that that's kind of brilliant I mean you assume that everybody is participating um, you know at a teacher level maybe every every um, individual person's text is a different color so the teacher can make sure everybody participated I don't know. But uh, it just seems like there's a yeah. there's some value in additional collaboration teaching that we're just not taking advantage of. I, I, I one of my takeaways from the show is that 
collaboration is the next frontier, I think. Um, in, it's in tough. A, in a lot of respects. And, and I think it is in school, especially. And it with, with kids and people working remotely and all that, I just think there's so many more ways of doing it. If, if everybody knows, they know, they know what Git does, they know what wikis do, they know how to write in Markdown and so on. Yeah, all good. <laughs> and uh, my producers are looking at clocks, so I have to <laughs> get to your plug. <laughs> oh, just, uh, yeah, for me, it's it's the same as always. Um, I check out all the things I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, it's my, my YouTube page. Oh, I'm wearing that same shirt today that I'm wearing in that intro <laughs> video on my YouTube page. That was not planned. From the but, Department um, of Repetition Department? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm there. Uh, like I said, I started a Discord um, just because I want to have better communication with the tiny little Linux learning community that that I'm forming. So, um, yeah, I go to seanpowers.com. It's in my lower third, if my lower third's anywhere, and um, see all the things I'm doing and join me. And that's Sean with an S-H. S-H-A-W-N-P-Zero. Not W-E-R-S. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Sean and Pete and the Twit people here for having me in the studio. This is a great place to be. Next weekend, of course, I don't have the schedule up, so... Okay, <laughs> Avery Penarum from Palisale, is that right? Uh, Palisale. So Avery Penarum, we've had, had him in the queue for some time. It'll be a good show. That is next week. I am Doc Searles, and I'll see you then. The world is changing rapidly. So rapidly, in fact, that it's hard to keep up. That's why Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, talk with the people making and breaking the tech news on Tech News Weekly every Thursday. They know these stories better than anyone. So why not get them to talk about it in their own words? Subscribe to Tech News Weekly and you won't miss a beat every Thursday at twit.tv.